saying at our location here. Let's go to Numbers chapter 4. I'm sorry, Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. If you can stand, uh, let's read that together. Numbers chapter 4, a verse, uh, I keep saying 4. Numbers chapter 14. Listen, don't judge me until you have to walk in this position with this mic. Amen. <laughs> Any, anything can be, anything can happen, amen. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, let's read. And it said, but because my servant Caleb had a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I will bring unto him the land he went to, and his descendants will inherit it. Amen. Someone say a different spirit. Amen. If you can be seated, we're going to minister from the, the title positioned for increase. Amen. Positioned for increase. Amen. As co-pastor just walk in, we praise God for the leaders of this house. Co-pastor Timothy Fleming Jr. and his father, Pastor Timothy Fleming Sr. We thank God for them. Listen, you give honor to where honor is due. Amen, amen. I'm not the set person of this house, but when you have an opportunity to minister, remember who God has uh, put in place. And so you always give honor to where honor is due. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Position. Someone said, I am in position for increase. And I bless God for this word. Amen. Let's pray over this word. Amen. Father, we thank you for every heart, every listener that is listening this morning uh, for the word of God this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. H Father, hide us behind the cross that we will come to run to you. We will see you. God, let us know today that it's not a woman that is speaking or a man that is speaking to them, but it's the spirit of the Lord that's speaking through them. And Lord God, we thank you today that as you begin to speak, Lord, speak to someone's heart. Lord God, answer someone's question. Lord God, give direction and clarity today in the name of Jesus. Lord, do whatever you want to do. Holy Spirit, take over. And we thank you for this word today in the name of Jesus. We pray now that the enemy will not be able to take this out of our heart in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all distractions in the name of Jesus and we declare Holy Spirit take over in Jesus name. Amen. I'm positioned for increase. This is a wonderful time to believe God for increase. You know, the Bible says your words are powerful. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. You have to be careful what comes out of your mouth because you can be either speaking blessings or you can be speaking curses. And the Bible says words are so powerful, it's like a king who decrees something. It must be established. And when I read that in the Bible, it really stood out to me because when you look at kings, if they make a decree, it must happen. You know, even when John the Baptist's uh, uh, head got cut off uh, because uh, of a request of a woman, because they knew the power of decrees, and he said, well, listen, it's in a decree. If I, if I said it, it has to be done. You know, and so the, oh, that's the reason his head got cut off, because when a king decrees certain things and it happens, and, and you know, the Bible says that this woman danced so in front of the man, in front of the king, until she, uh, he said, what is your request? And, and she said, well, my request is because I, you know, I, I, I got the eyes of the, the king. My request is I want that man's head cut off. Even though he knew, come on, what? <laughs> you know, anything you, I can give you, you want me to have somebody killed? And so because, you know, different things are so powerful, he had to do it. Because what was set in stone. And you have to understand that when I started reading the Bible and saw that if a king decrees something, it's supposed to be established. It's supposed to happen. And the Bible says that is the same as with our mouth. That when God has given us kingly, a kingly anointing as believers, we walk in our kingly anointing. And, you know, we're sons of God. We're daughters of God. We're queen. You know, in the Bible, this is what we are. 
learn the way if you understand the kingdom of God. And when you understand this, God gives us authority. And when you understand authority, you don't have to sit here and say, I'm waiting on God to do something. Because God is waiting on you to give him permission to come and invade this earth. And when I found that out, I said, man, I've been sleeping on God for years because I've been waiting on heaven to open up. I've been waiting for something supernatural to happen, not knowing that it was on the inside of me. Somebody say it's on the inside of me. What you're looking for is on the inside of you. It's not over here. It's not over there. What you you can go for years searching and not knowing that what you need is the spirit of God. The Bible tells you that greater is he that's in me. He's in me than the devil that's in this world. God says, I'm in you, so use me. Put me to work. Use my ability. Every morning I wake up, I say, God, I thank you for your grace. I walk in your grace. And then as I begin to read the Bible, I found out that there are different levels of graces. You can, you can, it just, it, you can walk just in the grace of God. That alone is powerful. God's grace. What is that? God's ability. God, it has nothing to do with you. You're walking in God's ability. You're walking in God's favor. You know, God, God's grace is his favor on your life. When you ask that kind of question, what is God's favor on my life? That means he's favoring you whether you deserve it or not. We, I know you don't deserve it, but I'm going to favor you. I know you don't deserve the mic, but I'm going to give it to you. I know you don't supposed to be making that kind of money, but I'm going to give it to you. I know you don't supposed to be on that job, but because I know it's unfair. See, favor is unfair. It's not fair. And I remember when the Lord opened up a job for me, you know, I was sowing $100 weekly uh, tithe uh, uh, from the money that I was receiving, and it was nothing. And that means I didn't even make 1000 I was sowing what I was receiving, so I really was supposed to sow. I was only getting 100 I really was supposed to have been sowing $10. But I said, Lord, life cannot be like this. That all I am worth is $100 and my tithe, that you got to get frustrated and say enough is enough. As, as old as I am and I'm receiving just a hundred, some of you, you just got to stop settling for less and just receiving it. And, and I don't know, at that young age, the Lord was training me how to be a fighter. You got to learn how to be a fire, fighter. See, some people, when you come to this earth and, and, and you go through fire, some people, they get scarred from the fire. But then some of you, when you go through fire, you you don't come out smelling or looking like what you've been through. And some of us, we have to learn that being a warrior has to be taught. And so when I saw insufficiency, not enough, I said, that's not my portion. I don't receive this. Because if I receive it, I will pay $10, which means the, I, I'm worth 100 I said, no, Lord, there has to be something more. I'm, a, I'm grateful for it, but I'm not going to receive this as my portion. And I sold $100. Every time I got it, I said, I don't want to receive it. I'm going to sew it. I'm going to sew it before I even put it in my pocket. And I did it for one year. And um, Benny Hinn came to our church, this church, Benny Hinn came. And that was something supernatural to me because I was watching this man on TV for years teaching about the anointing, teaching about the power of God. And he came and ministered at Calmerton Road, and I was believing God for my finances at that particular time. Because here am I, a young girl that just got married, got little kids, and my finances don't look too well. I said, Lord, this is the hour I got to believe you not like never before. And so Benny Hinn came, and I found out that when God sends someone your way, and, and they carry an anointing, graces, remember, there are different levels of grace, you don't honor that person because they are on TV. You got to be kidding me, you honor this person just because they're the pastor of the church. You honor your mama just because she, you know, she's just your mama or your daddy. You don't know, no, you honor the mantle and the grace that's on their life. That's what you're honoring. For God to literally bring you to this earth and for you 
to be a trailblazer for this family, for you to be the anchor for this family, for you to set a stone and tell us this is, listen, I set an atmosphere for my home. We get up and we pray. You can set an atmosphere for your home and say, listen, as for me and my house, this is what we're going to do. As, do you know that there are people that are setting in stone for their family and they're creating generational curses? There are some people that get up and say, listen, as for me and my house, we're going to be depressed. Do you see they are depressed, their children depressed, everybody walking around sad, everybody walking around confused, don't know their identity, don't know what they're supposed to do in life because that want, that's the anchor of that particular family. The grandmama did it, the mama did it, the granddaddy did it, now all of the children doing it. And they are fighting to see where will somebody be like a David in this family and say, listen, I'm going to look at that giant and say, listen, you have been tormenting this family long enough. You got to go. In the name of Jesus. See, David defeated his giant before he even defeated it. He did it with his word. He said, listen, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to you in the name of the Lord. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to you in the name of the Lord. Do you know it wasn't no stone that took that man, that giant out? It was a supernatural power and bagging of the Lord that began to take, you know a stone can't take no giant out. And so you can go today and try to take a stone and try to throw it somewhere to I'm being like David. No, you better ask God, what is your weapon for 2024 that is going to help you and your family to be, keep going in this world? And so as we begin to see that certain situations will begin to happen in our lives and different people carry different things, find out what you carry in. This is not a bad thing. This is for God to open your eyes. Remember, when God speaks, when God sends a, a, a word to you, he always sends a solution. God would never tell you, listen, get your act together without not having some, a solution behind it. You need to find out what do you carry in life. Because what you carry will affect you in generations. What follows you? What follows you? Because I know what the Bible says is supposed to follow us. But some people, they have allowed other things to come in to follow them. What follows you? Because this is what's going to affect you in generations. Does peace follow you? Does joy follow you? Does provision follow you? And I'm not telling you about, I'm not even, listen, without blaming any demon, without blaming any demon, what have you done for yourself? Come on, what have you done to literally make sure that I'm going to secure it, secure it, secure it, secure it, without blaming any demon? Because we do know certain things can hinder. But without saying this person fault, that person fault, this person fault, we are good at blaming others. But as an individual, what have you done? Because you know what? When I read in the Bible, you know, this is what stood out to me the most. The Bible says, when you go before your maker, when you go before Jesus, when you go before your master, the Bible says he's not going to ask you, what did your mama do? Well, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't successful because of my mama. God is not going to ask you what your mama did. Well, you know what? It was my doggone daddy. If he was in my life, do you know I hear the story all the time? My daddy, if my daddy was there, if my daddy had this, if my dad, when you go before your maker, your daddy got to answer God for himself. It's so funny. Everybody got to fight for themselves. In the Bible, it talks about how a woman, she was pregnant with twins, and both of them fighting. Who would be the first to come out? Two babies inside of her. Two nations inside of her, and they both fighting each other. In the, they, these brothers was fighting each other in the womb. Read the scripture. Now, one thing I can say, I was pregnant with all three of them right there. And the one that did a lot of fighting the most was TJ up in that womb. I'm like, Lord, what is going on in my stomach? My husband looked, my stomach be jumping, boom, boom. And I said, no wonder that, li that boy liked basketball. <laughs> because in my stomach, he would be boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, oh, 
just my stomach just sometimes I'll be sitting there just boom, 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 just hit. I mean, he, one day I was sitting out, it's like he took his whole knee and just his elbow and just stretched it all around. It's like one day he did a whole stretch and my whole stomach just, just, I said, what in the world is this little boy thinking? I was sick with this boy. I went and ate a, a, a sub, I asked my husband, go get me a Subway sandwich. And my husband came back with a steak and cheese. That thing was so good. But TJ didn't like it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Can't write. I'm just, oh, it was horrible. But with Tamara and Jeremiah, his, I called my husband's mom, and I said, listen, can you help me? My first pregnancy, that, that baby had me all over the place. She said, drink some olive oil juice. She told me a secret. And I drunk that olive oil juice. After that, I was no more sick with TJ. I was no more sick with Tamara, Jeremiah. You got to talk to some seasoned saints. They'll help you along the way. <laughs> she told me one day, she said, go get some olive oil juice, and it'll settle your stomach while you're pregnant. When I tell you I had the most amazing pregnancy, I'm talking about no nauseous, no sickness. When I would hear other people, I would go to these baby showers, and they would say, um, um, what, what, what you went through in your pregnancy? And I would keep quiet because I'm like, listen, sometimes you just can't receive other stuff. If everybody else struggling, look, I ain't saying, because I'm not struggling. Come on, I'm not going through, you know? And so the Bible says this lady was pregnant with two twins in her, in her stomach, and sh they were fighting each other even in the stomach. Fighting. There has to be a fight in you. A fight in you that says something ain't right. That I'm blaming everybody for this and that. And when you go before your maker, God is going to say, what did you do? So this is why I walk in so much love. I'm a kind person. But I ask God to guard my heart because I know I give out genuine. genuine. But the Bible says God covers us because he knows what's in other people's hearts. So there are people I'll try to connect with. God won't let me connect with. He won't let me. And I'm like, I'm so kind. You know, I, I want to connect, connect. And God is like, you don't know. I know what their conversation is. They're not good for you. And sometimes he won't even tell you why. But all I know is God will protect us. And that's why I walk in love. Because the Bible says on this earth, in order to make it and make sure you have a sweatless victory on this earth, you got to forgive. I was trained and taught on forgiveness. God trained me and taught me on forgiveness. He said, Jackie, if you want to go higher in this life, you better drop it. You better drop it. But God, I don't like it. God, I don't drop it. Let me fight your battle. Forgiveness will shift your life like never before. This is why I'm talking about forgiveness. If you leave out of here right now, you get a phone call. And it, the, con the conversation goes sour. And, and, and you know that this person is wrong. And they're supposed to say they f they're sorry and they don't and all that. Da -da -da -da. Guess what? God said, drop it. Hey, listen, at this, at this point in the game, ain't no time for proving yourself. When God fights your battles, come on, the fight is not pretty. Come on, come on. When God fights your battles, you better put it in the, you better put it in the master's hands. Where you know that individual is wrong and you still say, we leave, we leave it alone. And still be kind. Still be nice. The Bible says love those who hurt you. Love those who talk against you. Love those who persecute you. I don't like that scripture. But the Bible says, love those who do you wrong. And this is one major scripture in relationships that will help a lot of people. Normally, when we get a lot of people come up to us in relationships, in relationships, this is one of the most concerned. I don't like that person. And guess what the other person saying? I don't like that person. I don't like the way you don't do this. Guess what the other person? I don't like the way you do that. And guess what? They both are saying the same thing, and it's correct. You got needs. This person got needs. But guess what? Who is the strong one in the family? Come on. Y'all don't want to hear this in here today. It got to be somebody that's strong. 
It got to be, come on, everybody can't be weak in the family. Come on. It got to be somebody that is strong in the family because if you got complaints and this one got complaints, who's going to be the one that says, drop all this mess? I'll, I'll be the first. I don't know about you in here, but have you always been the first one in your family that had to forgive, the first one that had to go to school, the first one that had to break barriers, the first one that had to do this, the first one that had to start the business, the first one that had to put the money down, the first one that had to pay off the debts, the first one, and then everybody else got their hand out. I know you the first, but help me. I know you the first, but look out for me. I know your credit good, but help my credit. Listen, I'm not here to handicap you. If I was a fighter, now you wake up and you be a fighter. The same principles it took for me to get my credit together, you can do the same thing. And the Bible says when you want it, and, and God knows your heart is right, he'll send other people your way because God is trying to help you. Then he'll send other people, listen, you better do it this way. There are conversations God will send people to you to help you. This is how you do it. Oh, I was doing it wrong. If God showed them how, to, not everybody's not called to go to a four-year college, but if you are, stop complaining and do what it takes to better yourself. Better yourself. Get the learning, get the education, go get a mentor, go get a coach, go get somebody. Sit, listen, it's somebody in this church you can sit through. If you sit down and listen, show me the way. Show me how to be a man. Show me how, that's why we need men's ministry. That's why we need women's ministry. Because you need someone show me how to be a wife. Um, listen, there are a lot of good women, but some are not good wives. Do you hear me? And that's not an offense. Just because you're a good woman don't mean you called to be a good a mother. There are people popping babies like never before, but they have not been trained how to mother those children. Everybody want to be honored at Mother's Day and Father's Day. <laughs> but you ain't doing the work. Oh, I wear the title. I wear, who, who cares about the title? We see your results in your children. Come on, somebody. And the Bible says it, that a good woman, uh, come on, somebody, you are not just wearing the title, but she goes out. Uh, the Bible says a Proverbs 31 woman, she gets up early before they even get up. We don't even want to talk about the role of a man. That's why it's men, you need men's ministry. You need a community of people to tell you, listen, I do this. You need other men to talk and tell them what they do. You need other women to talk. You know, when I thank God when we used to do Monday Night Women's Ministry, a lot of those women grew me up. They didn't even know. I would, even though I was the head of that class, listen, when I would open the floor for conversation, those women grew me up in that room. They grew me up. Man, I used to complain about everything. And then one day I was complaining, and uh, I, my husband, you know, when I first got married, you know, I would put the toilet tissues, this and that. He would take the toilet tissue off and put it where he wanted to in, in the bathroom. And that would irk me. And I'm like, I'm the woman of this house. Why are you messing up what I'm doing, you know? And he would take, every time I clean up, he would take the toilet tissue off and put it where he wanted to. So I was complaining one Monday night, one Monday night with the women. And I was like, you know, you know, this, uh, da, 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 this irks me, this, uh, da, da, da. and one of the ladies raised her hand. She said, that's all your complaint is? That he just moved the toilet tissue? I said, yeah, that, uh, that just bothers me. She said, girl, mine don't even come home and do none of that stuff. I'll take that. You can take mine. <laughs> See, when you have been through hell, you will understand what a good man is. Come on, somebody. That's your only complaint? Honey, I'm dealing with him uh, uh, inboxing multiple women. Come on, come on, come on. I'm dealing with such and such. I'm dealing with this and I'm dealing with that. And going to women's group showed me how other women was going through hell. And I looked and I zipped my mouth up. Because in a minute, I'm about to uh, uh, get, uh, you know, you can get rid of a person based off your issues. 
And so one of the ladies said, girl, if that's what he do, just put multiple tissues in there. And he didn't even know it. When I would clean up the side, I would put a tissue here, a tissue there, just have them all over the place. And that little spot he would le- leave it to, I left it right there where his little spot was. Because when you have to deal with people, it's a lot of forgiving. It's a lot of compromising. And let me just say this for the record. You can't do all the compromising and one person just sitting there just, 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 just la- lazy and all kind of stuff, just, just sitting there. Oh, yeah, you cook. You better wash some dishes. Both of us got a nine to five. Y'all better hear. Yeah, do y'all hear me in here today? Now, if you are housewife, I understand that. If the man is the breadwinner and and you are at home and he has set this up, that you stay home and raise my children. We understand that you have a lot on your your plate as a housewife. But if both of y'all working, no, everybody got a, a responsibility in this house. You can no longer throw the Bible up and say, you know, you the woman and you do. No, 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 no. I work, you work. Both of us got to literally ra- um, roll our sleeves up. That means you cleaning, I'm cleaning. You can't throw the load on one person and she's slaving, you slaving. And they're going to say, be the woman. The devil is a liar. I'm, I got the mic today. Come on, somebody. I know you heard it from a man's voice, but I got the mic today in the name of Jesus. And that is not biblical. That you're being the woman and being and working, according to the Bible, you're supposed to bring in the bread. Oh, my God. Oh, go listen to Miles Monroe. He'll get you right on relationships. Go listen to Dr. Miles Monroe. Because there are some men setting the plate straight. That's letting women and men know, no. Nah. And he talks about how the men got out of the place. Because when the war happened, a lot of the men had to go to war. M- M- Miles Monroe break that thing down. Why a lot of women had to step up in the man's shoes. Because a lot of them had to go to war and left those women in charge of the home. That means some of them not only, no, some half of them was housemakers, homemakers. They ain't know nothing about working. But when the men had left, all the women, men, women had to go and find jobs because if you, that's why in the Bible day, most women wanted a male child. If you had a male child, that was something powerful. Why? Because if the husband can't come through, guess what? TJ, you next. Then Jeremiah, you next. Why? You got to go hunting. You need the boy to go hunting for the food. Listen, if you hang with me, guess what you're going to see me watch? Little house on the terrace. You're going to see me watching the, 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 the husband driving the, what is the horse and carriage. Why? Because I was, I was brought up in the city life. I was brought up in the city of Atlanta. And, you know, I called my mama the other day. She was 60-some years old. And she said, Jackie, I'm out here uh, 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 tending to my garden. And I got upset with her on the phone. I said, Mama, you doing what? I'm tending to my garden and, and tending to my flowers. And look how I grew this flower. Look how I grew that. Now, during the pandemic, I tried to grow flowers. Those things died. And I said, Mama, why you didn't tell me you knew how to grow a garden and, and take care of stuff and grow food, your own food? How come I don't know this stuff? She said, y'all was in the city. We ain't need to know none of that stuff. Now, we were living in the country. I would have I showed you, Jackie, girl. I'm a country girl. I know. I said, but you didn't train me this stuff. You was in the city. We didn't need it. Everything was available. I said, but you handicapped me. So now, because I have been handicapped of how to be a woman, I go watch the movies. And I watch, instead of watching all those other stuff, I watch movies of how women take care of their home, how the man goes out, and how they love the male child. Because the male child, and you'll see these movies that if the father ever dies or gets sick, that y- the next oldest is out there doing the daddy's job. They teaching them how to work. They teach them how, look, in these movies, these men, they love to handle their home. That wife will go in there. Listen, I've seen the movies with the lady on the horses and the carriages. When they would find little properties and stuff, they would build it. They would flip that thing up and turn it. They'll make it a home. How many women today, they more interested in getting their, they'll spend thousands getting their boobs done and their house 
They'll spend thousands on their appearance. And then when you ask them, can you go inside their house? And when I'm seeing this next generation, I'm like, the, the, did the older, did the general forget to change this generation? That we're more caught up in appearance than literally uh, training up, training up our sons to be different. That's what the Bible says right here. Have a different spirit. Have a different, stop, ch some children, they are so spoiled, they have entitlement attitude. You're not supposed to have an entitlement attitude. Just because your mom and dad slaved to get this, that means you're going to have to learn, even if it is a blessing to you, that, when, listen, that's why when I would look at my children, I said, listen, we love you all here, but when you step out, if you step foot out of these doors, it's different in these streets. They don't care nothing about your granddaddy as a pastor. They care nothing about your mom and dad as preachers. They care nothing about that you love God. Can you do the job? Come on, you go before people and put these resumes and all this stuff. They don't care nothing about all that. They're like, okay, in, in, in. I went to school, in. I, my mom and dad, in. Can you do the job? And a lot of people see that they can't do the job. But why? Because no one taught them how to fight. And one thing I love about David's story, the Bible says he was tending to the sheep. He, his daddy was training him how to fight. He was tending to the animals. He had something to do. God put Adam on the earth. He had something to do. God says, go name the animals. And then when his woman came along, then he gave her vision. Come on. You can't just be in a relationship only for one thing. There are some people, they only want one thing out of you. And, and there's too many kids in here if I say it. And you get what I'm saying. Life is more than just a five-minute fix. Y'all better hear me in here today. They don't want to hear that. Because you can give a five-minute fix, but it don't fix a crazy person. Y'all don't hear me in here today. You'll, you'll say, oh, I thought that fixed it. They still crazy. Y'all don't want to hear me in here today. Hallelujah. Nice boobs don't fix that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go and get new clothes. All that don't fix that. Still look up and you'll be in poverty. You got to understand here that a relationship is more than just that particular thing. It don't pay bills. That don't pay bills. It don't help the children. It doesn't help the relationship. It's one part of the relationship. That's one part of it. And one of the things I've learned is, I was looking at an African pastor, and he said, he said, you know why so many people get in a divorce? Because they're not friends. He said, you're not friends. Go back to being a friend. And you're not, listen, I was, I was listening uh, at this service, and this couple came up. And this prophet looks at this man and woman and said, come here, let me pray over y'all marriage. Y'all about to divorce. And she bust down, started crying. And she said, let me pray deliverance over this marriage. And she looked at the husband and said, you are not her pimp. And she laid hands on the man, he fell out. It was strong deliverance because this man married her but he was really treating her like she was his, like he was a pimp. Y'all don't want to hear this kind of talk. Y'all don't believe that? Because, oh, biblically, that if I marry you, you got to do what I say. But I don't love you. I'm only pimping you. Come and get in the bed. Come and get in the bed. You don't love, you're not her friend. So every night she has to be tormented by a man that think I'm your pimp. But then biblically, he throws in her face, oh, I'm your husband, and the Bible says you're supposed to honor me. But he's wicked. And she's suffering. And, the, and the, that prophet brings the lady up and the man up. And when she, la listen, there are some encounters with God. You can't talk to demons. You got to cast that thing out. And I thought when she said to the man, you, you know, you're not her pimp, I thought he was going to get angry in the service. This video is going viral on social media. 
I thought he was going to get angry. When she laid hands on him, the power of God delivered that man out of treating that woman bad. You are not to be pimping people and treating them horribly, all because of one word, which I wish I could say, but half of y'all in here old enough, y'all should be able to understand what I'm saying. Because you're going you're gonna to learn it in the streets anyway. The church keep it quiet, but the streets are going to be real with you. They're going to just say the word. And that's what some people, some people need deliverance. And that word is a scary word. Because what you're doing is you're treating people like your father treated this one. You're treating people like your mother treated this one. You're doing what you saw in your family. And God is saying, somebody got to rise up in this life generation and have a different spirit. Your daughter should not see dysfunction. I was looking on YouTube and this man on Valentine's Day, he would line all his daughters up and he would give them jewelry and stuff and, and cards. And he said, listen, I have set the tone. So whoever comes and take my place in your life, they better set the standard. And I love women who have great fathers because they ain't nothing to be played with. Listen, I got the mic today. It's the women's. It's the women. Look, it's Women's Day service. Come on, come on. Sometimes you hear it from a male perspective a lot, but listen, I'm talking from a woman's perspective biblically. It ain't in the flesh. You can take it straight to the word. If you want to fight me at the service, I'll say, listen. What did the Bible say? What did the Bible say? Can't fight with God. You now you fighting with God, but biblically. You have to understand that you need godly examples in your life. You need godly examples in your life to teach you the way of the Lord. Because when you know who you are in Christ, the only reason some people are powerless, somebody say, I'm powerful. I'm not powerless, I'm powerful. But the only reason many are powerless, because they don't know who they are in Christ. There should be no one that come and take your crown away. There should be no one that can come in. Listen, if you only in that relationship for bills, someone took your crown away. I've seen, seen men and women suffer because they're like, oh, I, at least I got somewhere to sleep. The devil is a liar. And you and you, the thing that's supposed to bring you joy is making you scream every night. That is not God. Listen, take the house and the money. I want peace. Y'all don't want to hear this in here today. Because there are some people, if they don't get delivered, you will go to your grave. And I've seen it to this day. I know couples right now, they are up in age and they fight like dogs and cats every day. And I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I said, really? They said, we've been fighting in our 20s and we're now almost 80, still fighting in, like cats and dogs. Y'all don't believe that kind of stuff. That what was supposed to bring you joy, <laughs> the devil said, oh, as long as I got a roof over my head, I'll deal with the dysfunction. The devil is a liar. Somebody got to have a different spirit. It got to be peace. I carry peace. I carry love. And guess what? You do know why you get fought so much on your job? It's not because of you and you highly educated. It's Jesus in you. When a person carries demons, they fight God in you. That's why you're being fought, because they're fighting God in you. You don't know what people are going through when they go home. You don't know what people go through on their jobs. You don't know what people go through in their families. You don't know what they're going through. But we declare in the name of Jesus that there will be an exit out of some of the things you have been experienced for years. That the Lord, he says, he said, he, the Bible says, if there's a way in it, there's a way out of it. 
I don't know who needs to hear that today, but if you got yourself in some mess, God says, I can get yourself out of this mess because the Bible tells us it's a way of escape. I can give you a way of escape out of anything. I can give you a way of escape. Now, I'm not telling you to pack your bags and leave your family this Thanksgiving season. And you're like, where Johnny went? That woman said, I got to leave. I heard her preach that thing. I'm getting up out of here. They said, for Thanksgiving dinner, everybody missing, but so-and-so, what happened? They call him and they blaming me. Do you know someone called me about that the other day? <laughs> they was like, oh, my so-and-so left. And I said, why? They said, they heard you preach one day. I said, don't say that. Uh-uh. <laughs> said, they heard you preach. It said, said uh, Jackie Fleming said, so I said, and they did what? <laughs> blaming me. No, that's your personal decision. I'm only just leading you to the word. But don't be going this Thanksgiving season leaving folk and then telling them, saying, listen, the woman God told me to pack my back. No, what I'm telling you is God can get, begin to change attitudes. He can change your perspective. He can teach you how to forgive. He can teach you how to take the chip off your shoulder. He can teach you that if you're around difficult people, how you have to be quiet around certain people because it's not them talking, it's spirits talking through them. You get what I'm saying? Some people, is the Bible says, it's a waste of conversation. Because you'll see, see, listen, I pray you all have the spirit of discernment. That when you start talking to somebody and you see the conversation is going left, you just be quiet. I, I, I kid you not, it's not them talking, it's demons coming out of them. It's generational stuff coming out of them. And here you trying to see a solution, they still back. Have you ever seen, what the scripture say, love keep no record of what? Y'all know that scripture, love keep no record of wrong. So why is it every time we talk, you start bringing up 1995? Baby, 1995, I was at Freaknik. If you want to keep telling me about when I was at Freaknik, it's 2023. I'm not that woman no more. I, yeah, I used to go to Freaknik. Was it 1995, 1992, or whatever? But every time we talk, you bring it up what I did in 1995. Yes, the freak neat was in Atlanta, and I was having a ball. But I'm delivered now. You know, I met you when you was at the freak neat and all of that. Listen, love keep no record of wrong. I'm delivered now. Let's talk about now. Because the Bible says a person who stay in the past, they will never go nowhere. Come on. But you got to say we moving forward now. We moving forward now. And a woman and a man that knows how to move forward, their children move forward. Their business move forward. Your finances move forward. You will never move forward staying in the past. God said, even when the woman looked to her past, she died. Come on. She turned into a pillar of star. That's how powerful it is when you keep looking back. You, you stuck. You keep, you keep looking back. And every time you look back, you're not going nowhere because you're constantly reminding yourself of your failures. And that person is on a whole nother place in God. Love keep no records of wrong. So next time you're in a conversation with someone and you see they keep bringing up the past, remember that scripture. You shut your mouth. You're going to have to let God fight your battle because their mindset is not healed. And the enemy has them still in the past. This will save a lot of people in marriages because you will see one person will be going forward and the next, another one still in the past. They still in Y'all It's 2023. Y'all supposed to be buying properties and, and, and literally vacationing. They still stuck. They way back here. And you got to have one, that's why the Bible says one person in the house who is righteous can save that whole family. God don't care nothing about one of them is behind. At least you know God. Come and learn of God. Come and learn how to pray. Come and learn. That's why it is better to know God before you get into relationships. You get what you pick, and I don't mean to be rude by that. Somebody not going to like me from, from what I just said. You get what you pick. Someone say that. You get what you pick. Either you have gotten a prayer partner. What's a prayer partner? A woman and man that can grab hands and pray together. Isn't that beautiful? You've seen them beautiful couples online. They pray together. They pray together. But some of you, you ain't got no prayer partner. 
you got a prayer point. Y'all don't want to hear this in here today. They on your prayer list. Y'all don't want to hear me in here today. Come on, somebody. You can't grab hands and pray with them, but you got to pray for them. Y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all supposed to be on the same level uh, praying. Uh, come on. And God is saying, that's the reason I haven't let you conquer this mountain. Because uh, y'all still got to pray for each other. You supposed to be on the level where y'all praying for other stuff, but you got to spend years praying demons off of, come on, somebody. You got to understand the difference in relationship. That's why if the Bible says, wait, you better wait on the Lord, I say, wait. Because the Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and he obtains favor from the Lord. He, the Bible says if he found a good woman, that man is favored. I look at certain women and I look at the husband because if the husband is not favored, I say, my God, what's going on with that wife? You're not responsible for other people's actions, but you can at least pray for him. And your prayer should be able to keep and sustain. Amen. Your job is not to make nobody be perfect, but you can pray for someone. I pray today that you receive this message. And I talked about relationships because here we are coming to Thanksgiving this week. And one of the biggest things is people can't deal with people. And in order to not deal with personalities, guess what? I'd rather just go on vacation. I'd rather get away. Why? Because you're dealing with a lot of dysfunctional, dysfunction. You're dealing with a lot of people who are dealing with, you know, emotional baggages. And some people, when they care, you ever seen somebody, they come into the Thanksgiving party, they carrying all them load with them. Depression, sickness, sadness, drama, fighting, and they got a little lick on the side. Because they're going to increase that activity. So you say, listen, I don't want to deal with that this year. I don't want to deal with that, but I'm here to tell you, some of you can put a blood wall protection around you and say, I can smile, but I'll stay. I'm only giving, I'm only giving y'all an hour. That food ain't ready. I'm gone. Why? I showed my face, but I, didn't, I ain't got time for that because you can't control people, but you can show and show the love of God. But you're dealing with people, and when you deal with people, there's a strategy behind all of this. Amen? Let's all stand. The Bible says they was able to move forward in life because they had a different spirit. They had a different spirit. And a lot of people are not moving forward because they don't have a different spirit. One of the signs you can tell a person who has a bad spirit, they're always moving backwards. But if you have the spirit of God in you, he'll, he'll wake you up and say, let it go. You've been fighting for years. Let it go, what your dad did to you. Do you know there are some people that's going to go to their graves and never apologize? <laughs> they are master of being angry with you. And you're going to have to let it go. At my daddy's funeral, my brother was so angry. And I said, why are you so angry? He's dead now. Dad's gone. He said, well, I was looking for this man to love me, and he never did. I said, if you don't let it go, you're going to continue fighting the demons he fought. I saw my dad dying, fighting his giants. One of his giants was alcoholism. He died. The doctors warned us. They said, tell your daddy to stop drinking because that's what's taking him out of here. He died fighting. That was his giant. One of his giants, alcohol. And then it was so funny when my brother comes up to me at the funeral and he was upset. Have you ever seen children upset at the funeral? You're supposed to be, you know, this is a good man or whatever. And see, me, because I'm a Christian, I let go. I let go of stuff. When I talk to my daddy, I would never bring up his wrong. I would tell my daddy how much I love him, how much I thank God that you, God put you in my life. And he will always bring up his pain. He will say, but I, Jackie, I don't send you money. Jackie, I don't do this. Jackie, I wasn't there for you. Jackie, I wasn't there for you. I said, Daddy, who cares? You still living. He said, you make me feel so good. Why? Because people, listen, my daddy probably went through when he was younger. And when my daddy finally told me his story, how his mama got up and left him and his sister in South Carolina and took the rest of the children to New Jersey, that man has been broken. And so his, his auntie had to raise him. Do you see the generational curse? Same thing happened to me. Same thing happened. What happened to my daddy happened to me. 
and see okay, a lot of kids are fighting generational stuff. That ain't that ain't nothing you can watch and don't. That's that's generational. A demon has his hands on somebody's family. Somebody got to be like David and break it. Then I looked up at a young age. My mom and dad gets a divorce, and then my mom and him going through so bad. So my mom said, "Mama, can you raise my kids? Mama, can you just raise my kids? I'm going through mentally." So my grandmama had to raise me. We was passed around. Then when my daddy finally told me his story, I said, Daddy, that's my story. See, when you're fighting giants, you don't even know how to explain to your children how you even being tormented. And that's when I identify, I'm dealing with some spirits here. Mm -mm. I would never let these kids be passed around. No matter how hard it get, you letting them get passed around. Well, Grandma, can you keep them? Can you? Because I can't deal with life. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. And they, they, they just all, and the kids are suffering because you dealing with your stuff. Then at the funeral, my brother was so angry with my daddy. And I'm up here rejoicing that he's going on with the Lord. Because I prayed with him before he died. And he told me he knew God. And so... My brother was so angry with my daddy, and I looked at him. I said, what's up? What's going on? And so after the funeral, I called him. Holy Spirit, check, check on your brother. I called my brother. I checked on him. I said, how you doing after daddy passed? And he said, I'm drinking. I said, that's what daddy died from. Do you know that, like Pastor Fleming Sr., he has a mantle of pastoring. When a person dies, the mantle doesn't go with them. It looks for another person. If a person is dealing with a giant of demons of alcoholism, when that person died, that spirit doesn't go with them in a grave. It looks for another victim. And when my brother told me right after the funeral, he's up here drinking because he's upset that he didn't get the father he wanted, I said, it's a setup. Now this spirit is waiting to torment you so you can die the same way. Y'all don't hear me here. It's not, and I'm not naming names, but it's something fishy that the mama dies in a tub, then the mama dies in a, uh, the, the mom dies in a the tub, then the daughter dies in a tub. Somebody gotta break something. But guess what? The enemy wiped her complete seed out. There's no, nobody left in that generation. Guess what the devil comes to do? Steal, kill, and destroy. Come down. I want to pray for every family for, fam for Thanksgiving. Amen. I just want to pray over you all that this will be the best season of your life, that the Lord will wake you up and you will understand not to be arguing with people that's really fighting for their lives. Just come down to the altar. I want to just pray for families. Yeah, fill this section up right here. Fill it up. Come on. Come down. Amen. Amen. I will come down too because everybody needs prayer. Amen. Whatever attack that's being launched at you and your family this, this holiday season, it won't work. We cover every person under the blood of Jesus. We declare that you will silence voices. And I use my life as a testimony to encourage people that there's no perfect family, but there's somebody. And listen, you know, I was, you know, because when people talk to you, their spirits can rub off on you. So I saw not only my brother, you know, my daddy was a rolling stone. We found out he had so many other children. So it was all the children there at the funeral. And they was all mad. They were all mad. But Jackie didn't have a chip on her shoulder. And so I was leaving out the funeral, and I was about to be upset because everybody was upset. I don't like that people are upset at people's funerals and stuff. And so these group of men, they said my daddy was a fisherman. They said he loved fishing. And so these group of men at the, my daddy's funeral, they stopped and said, are you Bobo's, y'all know in the country, everybody named Bobo, anyway. Are you Bobo's daughter, the, the oldest one? I said, yes, I am. They said, yo, daddy bragged on you about how you preach, how you do this, how you, it was like you was his favorite. And I went in tears because if he never said it, he was talking me up. See, some of them, they are good people. They just don't know how to express it. But at his funeral, it was like an angel sent those men to come to me and say, yo, daddy loved you. Yo, daddy loved you. And I was able to release. You know, some people, you got to release them. You got to release them. This lady I, I was talking to, she was telling me how her son and her daughter, they can't stand her. I said, you got to get them to release you out of their hearts. 
If you don't release people out of your hearts, you will take them with you to your grave. I release my daddy. Come on, whatever anger that you was dealing with, you release that and say, he was a good man in my eyes. Amen? He wasn't perfect, but he was good. But guess what? I'm going to make sure that I, a good man, leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Yes, it's talking about properties. You're supposed to leave properties for your children, but I'm going to leave peace to my children. I'm going to leave, amen, joy to them. I'm going to leave wisdom to them that when they see the holidays coming, they will train it to them. They will love on their wives. They will love on their husband. They will love on their children because guess what? You, only a healed person can revive another person. Only a, a revived person can have a revival. You can't transform nobody if you haven't been transformed. And so when God sends you to the nations, he sees that you have conquered loving just people in your area. Your hands are lifted. Father, I cover families. The angels of the Lord have shown up. He says, I'm going to meet everybody at your place of need. Oh, God sees. Jehovah watches. God knows what you need. He knows how you need this rest. He knows that you need to be loved on. He knows what you need. In the name of Jesus, every hand that's lifted, Lord, cover families. Lord, cover them in the name of Jesus. Protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak peace upon them in the name of Jesus. We declare no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper in the name of Jesus. Lord, pour your oil upon them now in the name of Jesus. Send your protection upon them now in the name of Jesus. We speak the peace of healing upon them. Let the Prince of Peace show up like never before. Lord God, let them experience your love. Let them experience your peace. And right now in the name of Jesus, I rebuke all demonic attacks now in the name of Jesus that's been fighting them, not just because of the holidays, but it's been fighting them all the year long. In the name of Jesus, I silence that attack that's been over your life. I silence the attack that's been speaking over your destiny. I rebuke that demonic storm that has come against your finances in the name of Jesus. I rebuke all evil manifestations of evil that has come against you and I speak peace. I say good news. I speak Psalms 23 over every hand that's lifted. Your goodness, your goodness, your goodness, your goodness and your mercy. Mercy is preventing bad things from happening to you. I speak your goodness. Your mercy shall follow them. Lord, I declare good news, good news, good news, good news is coming to everyone. Lord, surprise them with goodness and favor. Lord God, give them, give them a different spirit today. Release upon them a different spirit. They will have a different attitude. They have a different perspective, and they know who they help come from. I want you to lift your hands and say, my help cometh from the Lord. May you receive supernatural help as you go back to your seat. Clap your hands in the name of Jesus. You now know where your help comes from. Your help doesn't come from your family. We thank God for your family, but your help comes from the Lord. God is sending supernatural help, supernatural healing, supernatural protection in Jesus' name. If there is one that wants to give their lives to Jesus today, amen. If there's one that want to give your life to Jesus on this beautiful Sunday, if that's you, we want to offer Christ to you. Come down. We offer Christ to you. Stand. Oh, my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh, my sister. Guess what he's going to do? He'll give you. He'll give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Come on to Jesus. Y'all better hit that note. Uh, come on. Oh, come. <laughs> come on. To Christ. Amen. Let's praise God for everyone today. Amen. Those of you who are watching, and if you did say, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, just repeat this prayer with me. Father, I confess that I'm a sinner. Wash me, save me, create in me a new, clean heart and a right spirit. I give my heart to you. And, and right then and there, Jesus steps into your heart. You are now saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive uh, Pastor Junior as he comes. Amen. 
I pray that you were blessed by the message today, that the Lord just gives you a different spirit. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. Again, we thank God. Uh, we're going to, glory to God, like we say, we never pay for the gospel, but we always sow, amen, into those that minister the word of God to us. So at this time, we're going to allow those who are sowing your seed, love offering, amen, uh, to go ahead and bless, amen, a woman of God this morning. Uh, I guess you all can just come down. I know you all just came down, amen, to, amen. Glory to God. So, and if you can put her digital giving, uh, her cash app on the screen as well. Amen. Because a lot of people utilize uh, cash app and things of that nature. Dollar sign, Jackie Fleming. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I thought we had her digital information on the screen. So, apparently we're not. But a dollar sign Jackie Fleming for those that are going to Cash App that so that way. Amen. Glory to God. <coughs> All right. All right. Again, we thank God. It is important during this season because uh, a lot of families are going through, a lot of people are hurting, a lot of people are suffering, and it is. Uh, you know, that is one of those things that I do recall. We used to have a good time in the men's ministry. Amen. A lot of guys come up there and they just had a lot of, a lot of weight on their shoulders. So that's something, you know, kind of be prayerful about. Glory to God as far as uh, kind of getting some of those things. I said, we can probably do it again, but it just won't be every single week. Amen. Every single week every Monday, maybe do like a, a quarterly thing or a monthly or something of that nature. Amen. Uh, but that is something that's kind of been on my heart and on my shoulders because a lot of guys need that. Amen. Uh, a lot of guys need that. You need to be around other people and families. I'm going to tell you one good book. Amen. Everybody write this down. If you've never heard of this book, if you are married or you're thinking about getting married, Make sure you read this book first. It's called Love and Respect. Uh, the author, his last name is Eggleston. Love and Respect because men and women have to understand each other. Amen. And if you are married or you're thinking about getting married, you're not married, but you're planning to. If you're praying for God to send you someone, read that book first before I... Before God sent my wife, amen, he actually sent me to the bookstore first. And I read a book, I Kissed Dating Goodbye by Joshua Harris. And then that's when I met my wife. And what God will do is he'll give you what you need information-wise before he sends someone into your life because he wants you to be prepared, amen. So read that book. Go download the audio book version, amen, audible.com, and go download that book. And make sure that you, you go through that book, amen. My wife and I, we are counselors, amen. We got a couple pastors that are our counselors, amen. And everyone needs to have that. And that was the book they said, I want you and, and, and your wife to read that book, amen. And we started going through that book. And I'm telling you, that is one awesome book. Let's stand, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the teaching of your word, and we thank you right now, Lord, just for this, this time, this season right now, uh, Lord, as, as, as we get ready for uh, the Thanksgiving celebration, and we thank you, Lord, uh, even as the prayer is going out, Lord, to cover families right now, and we thank you, Lord, that every weapon formed against our homes, it shall not prosper. For we declare, Lord, that you have already placed your hands on our lives, and we are blessed and highly favored. Now we cover us even as we leave out of this place under the blood of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, that no hurt, harm, or danger is going to come anywhere near us. Your angels are already encamped around us, and we are blessed, and we are highly favored. 
And anyone that's in this room today that has any needs, whether they be financial or otherwise, we speak the provision of the Lord be released upon them today, that every need is met. And we thank you and we rejoice in you this day. In Jesus' name, and everyone said amen. Amen.